The 2020 Wells Scorecard, uh, brought to us by Scott Burns over at Couch Potato Investing. Uh, so let's dive into this here real quick. And uh, if you're wondering when I'm looking around, because I got uh, my new bowling ball of a dog called Finn to go along with uh, old Pablo here. Hold on just a second. And as some of you may be aware, Finn is a little puppy, um, but he's not a little puppy. He's a big boy. Uh, a, a Rhodesian Razorback or something like that. It look, looks like we think he's a mutt, a pound, but definitely got some Rhodesian Razorback in there. Or Ridgeback, I think is what it's called. And he's going to be a big boy, especially compared to Pablo. All right, so let's read this. Uh, the data from the survey of consumer finances conducts every three years uh, certain information from the Federal Reserve Board. Uh, they've organized it, and now we can get some idea of how we're doing as a nation relative to our overall wealth. All right. Uh, one bit of good news that Intermed is making this information ready, readily available to the broad public. That's pretty cool. You can go to this website right here, which I'll link to uh, both these things to get uh, to look at it yourself. All right, the 2020 Well Scorecard. Finnegan over there, what a nut. <laughs> I love dogs. Uh, this table shows the net worth, including home, equi home equity of households graded by age and percentile wealth. All figures are in the thousands. With median existing home value of $260,000, the figures show that the median household net worth is about equal to the value of the median home as people head into retirement. That's pretty cool. So here, you're heading into retirement, 55 to uh, 59. Uh, the median net worth of people 55 to 59 is 194,000, which includes equity. <laughs> ben, what are you doing? Oh boy. If you're, uh, so I'm 50 to 54, our median net worth is 179,000 and our, uh, my uh, average, I'm above that. I'm probably right here, the top 25%. Uh, you know, if you calculate just your basically your home equity uh, and, and then your other uh, assets in terms of investable assets. I'm, I'm right, right about in there. I'm not certainly not higher than that. Maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, but right in that range right there. So I'm, I'm right at the 25% in my network, in my uh, age bracket. Um, I'm not in the 1%. I imagine none of you guys are either for the most part, but that's okay. You don't need to be the 1%. Uh, these figures, all in thousands, represent the distribution of all countable assets that we have. Value of your homes, businesses, bank deposits, stock bonds, mutual funds, less what we owe. So what we own minus what we owe, and that's how they figure that out. Uh, however you slice it, we're talking about a lot of wealth, some $119 trillion, according to the most recent Federal Reserves. That's crazy. The, there's a net wealth. A net wealth, that's net of debt, $119 trillion. Uh, but the consumer finances data doesn't even show the whole picture. Some forms of wealth are missing from the survey. The missing wealth makes a big difference, even though we can't put our hands on a lump sum. And mostly it's Social Security and, uh, and defined pension, pension benefits. They call that, he, he's calling that imputed wealth. I, 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 okay, I get it. I, I talk a lot about imputed income. If you have a house that's paid off, you know, say you're paying 2000 a month in a mortgage and your mortgage is paid off, you don't need a generate to raise twenty four thousand in which to pay that mortgage, which means you don't need to pay taxes on the twenty four thousand in which to use to pay the mortgage. So that's imputed wealth. You have essentially you're living rent free. You don't need to be paid taxes on it. It's a it's a huge benefit that people have looked. If you have no debt, you have imputed wealth, and the fact that you can live in this house for free, other than property taxes, homeowners insurance which means you don't need to make the money to generate the income to live in this, which means you don't need to pay the tax, which affect other taxes, social security, the tax torpedo and things like that. It's a huge deal. It gets overlooked so much. All right, so uh, here's an example of imputed social security wealth. Suppose you're 64 and you retire at 65. Uh, your average benefit of social security is 18,000 a year. What is that benefit worth as a life annuity? $345,000. That's greater than 272,000 net worth of the median household, as we just talked about. It's also great, uh, greater than the recent value of the median home. The threshold for being the top 25% of Social Security is about $1,900 a month, which is an annuity value of over 433,000. Uh, there you go. Social Security is a big, big deal. Uh, I, well, I can I completely agree. Completely agree. You won't get the top 1% by working for someone else. The top 1% have seven times the wealth of the top 10% when their wealth peaks in the late in the late 50s. 
Most wealthy people eventually realize they have enough. One of the consistent patterns in these groupings is that they are is that the greater the wealth category, the more likely uh, the net worth is to decline as people age beyond their 50s. The only category that doesn't decline much with age is those in the median net worth. So basically saying once you get a certain amount, you, your, your wealth starts to drop off. It could be because bad luck. It could be because you just don't want to work as much, whatever the reason is. But that's the whole point about the stag, the top 1% as if it's a certain group of people each and every year. It, people go in, go out, go in and go out. All right. So let's uh, hold on just a second. What do you, so let's look at the data, which is this site right here. Uh, I can look at this stuff until I'm blue in the face. Isn't that right there? P. Net worth by age calculator for the U.S. in 2020. Um, and so we go into net worth by age. So if you're, let's take a look, what is this going to do for us? All right, so if, you, if your net worth is 250000 and you're age 35 to 39, and we're going to count your home equity, uh, you are in the 76th, 77th wealth percentile. That's pretty cool. Use logarithmic. What if we don't use that? Uh, didn't really change. Do I got to change it? Okay, there you yeah. go. So you are in the 77th percent uh, threshold percentile for net worth. And I think, yeah, there you go. Sweet. So if you're to be in the 50% threshold, you should only have net worth of $55,000. That means 50% of the people have more, 50% of the people have less than $55,000 as net worth, including home equity in your 35 to 39. So all these people say you need to have a million dollars at 35 to 39 just, or whatever the hell it is. It's stupid. So here you are right there, 77 percentile. You got 250,000 net worth. You are in the 77th percentile. Uh, if you're 78, uh, to be in the 78th percentile, you need 266,000. Well, if you want to be in the top 10%, I, I don't know why you would care. It's 600,000. So let's go to me again. I'm going to say 50 to 54. We'll just say my net worth is 474,000. And let's just see. We're going to count equity. And I am in the right there, the top 25%, basically. Yeah, I'm in the top 25%. Oh, no, that's no body. That's that's a cord. All right. So that but if we don't include equity, let's say we ignore equity. We're just looking at investable assets. We're going to hit calculate. Um, then uh, I'd be in the 80 percent if we're not using that. Why would they not? That doesn't make sense to me. So if my net worth is 474 and I'm not including equity. I'm in the 80th percentile. But if I'm including equity. I'm in the 74th percentile. Yeah, that, that okay. I, I kind of get it. It's just odd to me. I think when. So let's say if you're, let's say you have $100,000. You're 50 to 54 years old. We're ignoring equity. You are in the 56th percentile if you're 50 to 54, if you got $100,000. That means more than half the people have less than what you have. And that's interesting. That's pretty cool. Uh, what was the average and median net worth by age? We talked about that. Um, the average right here, 49,000 between 25 and 29, but that doesn't mean anything. We want median. So your median net worth at 20 to 25 to 29, 25, 29, 7,500 bucks, which I includes equity. So if you don't have 7,500 bucks, it's okay. You're not that far behind. If you have more than 7,500 bucks, you're doing great. That's all there is to it. 30 to 34, the median net worth, which includes equity, is 35,000. 40 to 44, 127,000. I mean, so this, I mean, people, oh, we're never going to retire. Look, I mean, we have so much evidence that people are quite comfortable in retirement because of Social Security. It's just not that big of a deal. I hate the, the negative Nellies out there. All right, uh, here's how it looks without sans. Sans, that's French for without because we speak French here. What are you doing there, puppy? And without the top 1%, that's a tough one to see. The average, uh, the median, uh, that's, that's, I, I, that's a tough graph. Uh, source and, all right, so hey, we got uh, lots of good stuff on here. So, uh, again, I'll put link in the show notes. But look, your average and median, and average doesn't matter, who cares? Median net worth as how old you are is interesting. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It matters what your expenditures are. Are you spending What's your spending? That's what matters. And if your spending is, it should do your median spending for your age. That would tell you if you're on track or not, in my opinion. All right. 
Uh, pretty good stuff. It's uh, I like it. I think that actually website has more data than what I was just looking at. You got ooh income. Yeah, let's take a look at income. Okay, ooh income calculator presented by state calculator. Ooh, let's just take a look at that. So we live in California. We'll say we're making ninety thousand here in California household. Uh, what is this telling us here? If you're making 90000 a year household, you'd be in the 55% in the California for making 90000 a year. That's crazy. If you're making 90000 a year in California, you're still in the 55 percentile. That means uh, uh, more than half the people are making less. That's nuts. What if we just do individual? Ugh. If you're making 90000 I mean, so think of all those people with pensions in California making 90000 a year in pensions, which I, I know there are some. <laughs> Pablo, hold on a second. Here's, I mean, that's crazy. Let's let's look at that in, in Georgia, where I'm at, and do household. Nope. There you go. You're in the 69th percentile if you're in Georgia making 90000 in a household. That's crazy. Graph states. Income percentile in Georgia, if you're the 90%, 179,000 puts you in the top 10% of income in Georgia. 232 is the top 10% in California. 194 the top 10% in Texas. Oh, man, I love this kind of stuff. Countrywide, the median average, the median income average was uh, 68,000. Come here, let's show everybody what old Finn looks like. There we go. There we go. Here he is, everybody. You've been waiting to see him. My name is Finn. I, there goes Pablo. Hey, look at the two dogs. Oh, I love this stuff. So the in countrywide, the median income was sixty-eight thousand. The top one percent was five hundred thirty-one thousand income. That's crazy. Oops, excuse me, buddy. Highest average. I don't want highest, highest median household income was in Maryland because all the government employees at ninety-five thousand. Lowest median income was in Mississippi at forty-four thousand. So if you retire in Mississippi on freaking Social Security alone, you're going to be just fine. Heed the warning from above. The information obscures the disparities between workers in various states. Here are some, some extreme stats. Highest median income is Washington, D.C. Lowest median income is Mississippi. So highest median income is Washington, D.C. at 74000 Highest median income, not including D.C., is uh, Massachusetts at 53000 Lowest median income is uh, Mississippi at 32000 Oh, man, I could look at this stuff all day long. That is fun. We might have to do individual uh, videos on this. All right, well, let me get this guy out of our way here. There's Sniffy. Here's Sniffy Jr. Oh, man, I love these dogs. Good boys. They're so good. All right, love to hear comments on that. Put a uh, paw the like button. Don't forget to double paw it, just like you counted. You voted twice in Nevada or at Fulton County where I live. Double paw the like button. We'll see ya. Pop -o.